this is Megan Gill and I am here with Paint Flowers and More today. And this is going to be my last heart, I promise, for a while. Um, I have always wanted to paint a Mylar balloon. And so we are going to attempt that today and I am going to do a red Mylar heart balloon. So please join me with your watercolors and join in if you would like. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what I've got today. I have, I'm going to open that and see if you can't see that right there. Okay. So, but you want that bigger, don't you? There we go. All right. So what we're going to do today is we're going to paint a balloon and I'm going to draw it and I'm going to paint it and we're going to see how it goes. All right. So I have a six by nine piece of paper here, watercolor paper, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw my balloon. So of course, it's just one big balloon here. So I'm going to come in and I am lightly coming in and I'm drawing a big shape of a heart, right? Okay. Now these Mylar balloons don't have tips like this, right? So I'm going to come in and kind of lessen my tips. Okay. And then I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come in and look at, they have these wrinkles in them, don't they? So I'm going to come in and I'm going to make some wrinkles that come in and kind of mess up some of this beautiful straight line all the way down. Now I am looking at a reference, but for the most part, you kind of know that, Hey, there there's more wrinkles down here at the bottom because it gets to the bottom here. Right. And it has that little tag. And then when you come back up, so all I'm doing is I'm just cutting in and I don't know if you noticed, but I'm holding my pencil really far out. I am not holding it uh, really close and I'm kind of being um, not too worried about all of the things of like, this has got to be perfect and I'm kind of going back over it. And when you're going around an edge like this, there's going to be more wrinkles, right? Now, if you notice, I'm not going, those wrinkles aren't going that deep into this either. Okay. Um, there are only, well, it's about like a quarter of an inch or even less than that. Now over here where this goes in a lot, it's even more, right? So I can start getting a little bit more liney. All right. So that's going to be my general balloon shape, but I'm going to mark a few dark details. I'm not going to mark the highlight on it because I don't want to actually, um, well, honestly, what I don't want to do is that if you're trying to do a highlight and you have a line, a pencil line in it, it, it just doesn't look good. So I am kind of marking some areas where I feel are really, really dark. Now, that's the thing why everyone loves to paint Mylar balloons. They have such great reflections on them that you can literally come in and, and just have such fun trying to literally get your brain in. This is just a shape. This has nothing to do with, oh, this is a nose or this is a face and all that kind of stuff. So that is what's so cool about trying to do Mylar balloons. A lot of people love to do that. Same thing for shiny cars. Shiny cars are also great with that because you get all kinds of shiny details where all you have to do is work in all those little details and it's just shapes. So it gets really fun. All right. So I'm going to say that that is my balloon. Okay, let's just do 
a little bit there. All right, so what I'm gonna start with is I'm going to start with, I think this is an eight. This is an eight Windsor Newton. And I can't honestly tell you what my paints are here. I think they are a crimson, magenta, maybe permanent rose, and some kind of peachy color. I'm really not sure. But this over here is actually going to be um, its neutral tint. So I'm going to start by taking some of this and it's a light wash and I'm going to come in now where there's a highlight right here and I'm going to try really hard not to touch it. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to just come in and literally I'm going to go around that highlight at the moment. So I don't mess that up. Now, I'm going to do this with a lot of water and I'm going to just come in and that's the widest part of this whole balloon. So I am going to just come in and paint the whole thing. Now, I'm not kind of I'm barely touching the edge of my pencil lines here. I'm going to now wet the whole thing and I'm going to work wet on wet. Okay. Now red is kind of a staining color. There are some that are less stainy. When I mean that, I mean like stain your actual paper. So it's hard to lift it up, but that's kind of the point of red, right? Like it's, Gotta be there. Okay, what's cool about what you're seeing is you're seeing the, the glossiness, which is showing you really fast what's so great about this, right? Like of what's bright and the shine and stuff. So I'm going to pull up this red and I'm gonna get a little bit of the neutral color and I'm going to add to it. So I'm making a dark, it almost looks purple over here and I'm gonna start with this dark line here. I'm gonna just start plopping it in. That's a technical term, plopping it. And really working on where these little, see, each one of those wrinkles needs to get darker. So I'm just coming in and I'm making wrinkles. But remember that was the biggest part right there was the darkest. So I literally am coming in and I'm just going to add some dots to each one of these little wrinkly lines. Now there were some of these parts that were even darker and that's what I'm kind of filling in right now. Now there is wrinkly parts next to this highlight. I mean, as you can tell, I went in, but that's kind of a drier area. So you see it's sharper, which works just fine. Okay. Now, because it was wet on wet, do you see how it literally bled together really nice? That's what we're kind of going for here. So I'm actually going to start and I'm gonna get another red. I think this is permanent rose. And I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna go along this line right here with it. Um, well, so I have this middle tone of red and I'm gonna come in put that in here as I go in and just bringing it out a little bit painting just some it's basically just shapes and lines I'm not painting in the whole heart I'm really paying attention to where things are and as you can tell, the more I go in, the more shinier it looks. Now, this is getting a little harsh. So what I'm gonna actually do is I'm gonna wipe off my brush, get a little bit of water on it, and I'm gonna see if I can't fudge some of these edges because it kind of needs to be a little bit softer. And so that's what I'm doing here. Now, I can also do that inside this. So this actually had more of a white, not a white, but an actual 
highlight in this area. So what I'm doing is I'm taking it and I'm wiping off some of the wetness and also of the paint. And that's giving me some highlights to go off of. And I'm doing it while it's still wet, of course, because it's going to bleed a little bit. We kind of want it to bleed. We want it to lighten up. But the more I do this, the more I highlight, like there's more lights in the room, basically, is what's happening. And that's looking really good. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to add a few right along that edge. I'm going to add a few to this edge. It's basically right beside some of those where it needs to be dark. So the best thing I can tell you is where there's a dark, there's a light. So it's best to come in and actually like find that and see if you can't bring it up. Now, I'm actually going to get my smaller brush. Now, this is a 20 over zero, which is a little small. But I want to see what I can do here. And I have now got more neutral tint then red and I'm going to come in here on this line right there where I kept saying this has to get darker right in here and not only does it have to get darker sometimes these wrinkles go all the way across it so I'm just kind of dropping in some of this neutral tint in that area because it's still wet it's automatically doing that for me if it was dry, I'll be honest with you, I might be a little scared. I think that's what I like about watercolor is that if you are a scaredy cat, what you can do is you can just go as light as possible. Just add more water. Just add more water. And the more water you do, the more, the lighter it becomes. And therefore, you can work with it. Now, do you see how adding these ridges right here is starting to make this look really 3D, which isn't that cool? Okay. And then I'm adding some in here. All right, now I, I didn't get many balloons as a kid. My mother did not like balloons. She was a school teacher. And I guess there was too many balloons in school. I don't know. I've never got too many balloons. Um, I don't like the way they sound either. So that's really nice and dark right there, but I want it more pink and more red. So I'm going to just come in with that color. And I'm going to come in with my hot pink now, and I'm going to start coming in on these edges. Notice I'm doing all of this while it's kind of wet still. But when I add it to it, it's sucking that water into the balloon and really making it shine. Now this side over here is kind of dry. So I can come in on here and actually do a little bit more wrinkles to really make that nice and light. Now this side is a little too flat for me. So I'm gonna start bringing it out you see what I just did there? I kind of curled it, curved it just a little bit so it would look like it had more of a wrinkle. And I'm going to just come into all of these little lines again with this darker permanent rose and add to the wrinkles. When I add to these wrinkles, this whole little part here is just a little bit more darker. So I'm going to just add little lines. And notice the more I do that, the more rounded this thing looks, which is just the coolest thing ever. I think that's what's so great about watercolor. Is that you can do so many cool things with it. All right, so here I am almost done with this part. We kind of need it to dry a little bit before we move on. So I keep on adding stuff to this dark part because there is a dark part happening. Now, I don't like what's happening right here. 
So what you do, if you didn't like that, I'm gonna get me some water on my brush. And I'm gonna see if I can't fuzz that a little bit. You might need a bigger brush to do that. But do you see how just by doing that, and you see how I'm not going too much in the inside of this? I'm really staying on the outside because one of those Mylar balloons, it kind of stops on that edge, right? And it has like this sharp edge and then this stuff starts going. So notice I did a really hard line there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my brush and literally kind of make it fade into itself. I'll be honest with you, I need a little bit better of a brush here. We're going to go back to our bigger brush. Sometimes you got to learn when you need to switch. Okay. And it carries more water. Now, it's getting very, very close to that, and it is a sharp little edge there. So I'm going to wipe it off, and I'm going to come in, see if I can't get that to really come in. Oh, it's looking really good, though. Okay, so what am I going to do next? I think I'm going to come in with a dryer real quick, and I'm going to hit it with a dryer. So this is a heat ranger tool. It's like one of my favorite tools and it's not very loud. So it kind of comes through and I can talk through it, but that is getting a lot better. So I am drying it just enough to where it doesn't have, it's pretty dry, okay? I'm gonna come in now with my smaller brush even, and I'm going to get me some more of that neutral tint more of my pinky red. All right, you see that? I've got some neutral tint with my pinky red. It's really nice and dark. And I'm gonna start coming in to this spot right here. Now, I don't wanna go too far before it's, like I wanna fuzz out edge of that. So I went right along that edge. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to fuzz this side out just a little bit. I don't want this to bleed all over the world. I just want this to be lightly there. Nice. Okay. I'm going to do that again on some of these uh, wrinkles that I've got going on here. So it shows that it's literally has a wrinkle and it goes right in there. All right. And it feels like I'm literally just drawing lines on this because I am. I'm really coming in and I'm doing really sharp lines, trying to get it really sharp because that is what's going to make this Because if you don't, if you wimp out on this stage, it's not going to look very puffy. You've got to get really brave and come in and add some real good line work to this to make it pop. So I'm going to come in to this top part up here and there's a few places where it's just like this. There's just enough of that where it comes in and it's a highlight of this real bright red. In the meantime, I'm going to come in and go to the, I don't really want it to bleed. It's bleeding. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to, Literally, because it's bleeding so much, I'm taking a paper towel and I'm going to go straight down. And that's going to take that off. And that works much better. Okay. Now, I want that a little bit more peachy, pinky. I'm going to do that in here. Okay. I want you to learn in this lesson that it doesn't take a whole lot to do 
a mylar balloon. You basically have to have, honestly, two colors, right? That's all I've used. And you, it's a lines and a lot of bravery, right? Because you have to come in. And I'm not even really painting the whole thing. Now, you know how those mylar balloons have those edges? So I'm coming in with my little... And I'm going to come in and I'm going to add little um, I'm gonna cur curvatures, that edge where they plaster it all together. And I'm doing it pretty pure color. And honestly, I'm just coming in with my brush and I'm waving it. And it's really... Just pure color. I don't have much water on it. But do you see how that's really making it show up? I'm really liking the way this is turning out. Okay, so we're almost finished. And now, how do I do it from this side without moving this? Let's see. I'm going to come in from this. That's not enough water. If it's not making... A straight line for you you may need to add water now I do want pure color though so there's a good mixture here between what we've got going on here to make it like if it's not going if it's not flowing if your paint is not flowing this is in watercolor this is in acrylic and oil if it's not going over your surface like butter like you know spreadable butter not the hard butter that's been in the fridge you need to add water okay so here is your Mylar balloon. I'm looking, I'm really liking the way this is turning out. Okay, so what did we learn here? We learned wet on wets. And I will have to say, I don't like the fact that I have this line right here. I see a line of my pencil marks. So that's why I keep telling people, draw lighter, draw lighter. But what I could possibly do, possibly, I'm gonna see if I can't make it a little bit brighter. Here we go, people. So I have a wet brush with my permanent rose. And I'm gonna come in along that edge. And you see how it's not blending, so I'm gonna go in and make it touch some stuff. Now that right there is too, too much of a hard line, so I'm gonna get some water on my brush and see if I can't move it. And each time I do, each time I go off the screen, I'm actually um, taking my paper towel and wiping it off. All right, folks. Ugh, I think I like it. I'm coming in with some more wrinkles, which is with the neutral tint. Now, you could use, I still want the pink in there, but that neutral tint is really good at giving that look of... Okay, I like it. So if you've enjoyed this lesson, please let me know. I would love to see your Mylar Bloom. And I would love to also have you follow me on Facebook or Instagram or YouTube. So subscribe so you can see more of these. And I hope that you've enjoyed it because I have. And there's my Mylar Balloons. Wishing you. Happy Valentine's Day.